and the run schools are bad. And I was thinking, you know, that the battery has a lifespan. That's what I mean. And after that lifespan, they have to plug it up to charge it up to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we are like Tesla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to plug up, charge up, so that we can go some more. And as expensive as Tesla is, glory to God, it still has to follow the process. It still has to go through that process in order for it to be rewarding to the one who paid all that money for it. We know that Jesus paid for us. And we know, amen, glory to God, in order for us to continue to be rewarding to him, then we have to do what we have to do to keep our spirit alive. Jesus. Are you listening? Yeah. To keep your spirit alive. Because there's so many things that are going on in our world today that if we allow it, it will kill our spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's for the young and the old. There are so many changes that are rapidly taking place and happening that we can't even keep up with all the changes and the things that are going on that we don't necessarily agree with and but can't do anything about it. We have to stay charged and we have to stay plugged up and we have to keep our spirit alive. If we don't keep our spirit alive, then surely we should die. You know, if we, amen, glory to God, profess to have the spirit of God, then the spirit of God needs to be kept alive in us. Yeah. If we do what he has asked of us to do, then we can stay on top of being alive and not underneath, crushed every day that we live or going through unnecessary changes. Now, it happens to the best of us. Yeah. So it's no point in anybody sitting here today saying that, amen, I'm on top of the world every day. You are not on top of the world every day because you may be like Tesla and you need to plug in. You need to charge glory to God so that you can stay alive. Yeah. Because we've seen those who have not charged and plugged in die. Yeah, right. And as a result of that death, they go back. Amen. And even sometimes when we're pushing forward and we're somewhat charged, amen, but we see the red signal light flashing, yeah, yeah. letting us know that in a very little while, yeah. glory to God, you're going to have to go back to the plugging station. Yeah. You're going to have to go back, glory to God, and get yourself charged. So this morning, I decided that we will talk about that. Uh -huh. Amen. Because, you know, we, you, you, you are a church that, glory to God, that has uh, so much, and, and you've been given so much, and and basic things that others take for granted, you know already. And so it's, it's no point if you keep on going back, teaching you the steps and teaching yeah. you, amen, yeah. basic salvation yeah. and things of that sort that you already have gotten. But now what I need to do is keep you charged. Yeah. Are you listening yeah. to what I'm saying? Yeah. Now it may not be a shouting down a message or whooping down a message. But it's going to be a message of weight that's going to, amen, glory to God, set on you and those of you who would dare, amen, glory to God, to, to, to challenge this message, you will be blessed by it, amen? amen? And so, amen, we're going to start with keeping your spirit alive. We are made up of spirit, soul, and body. So you are a three-part individual. Now, we know, amen, glory to God, and we spend a lot of time keeping our, our body in shape. We go to the gym and we dress it up and we do all these things and we get these nice uh, hairstyles and fingernails and eyelashes and, 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 and all the stuff that we do to keep our body in shape, amen, and our soul connected to it, amen. But you got to understand that you are a three-part you. Are you listening to me? And so our spirit is the most important of the three. Now, often this is the most neglected of the three, but it's the most important because it will determine whether you live or die. Uh -huh. 
And if you die, where you will spend eternity? Are you listening? Amen. So it is the one thing that will remain with us long after life is over, long after, amen, the body is dead, long after the soul has made its choice, our spirit will remain. Because our spirit will go on to live with the Lord. Are you listening? So it's important that you take care of it here and now because it will be with you forever. I don't expect you to shout. <laughs> but I do expect you to listen. Because this is going to be life changing and some of you are going to make some great, great, ready decisions based on what you hear about who you are. Mm -hmm. And so our spirit is the most important. One of the reasons why we need to feed our spirit. Yeah. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 say, May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the body and soul must be submitted to the spirit. But what happens is we, amen, glory to God, submit our spirit to our body and our soul. Amen. This is the reason why we find our charge going down. Amen. This is how we find depression. This is how we find giving up, tossing in the tower, finding other interests, to occupy the time that you have been given to the spirit. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. This is how we find ourselves in trouble with God, praying and receiving our answers. Mm -hmm. This is how we find ourselves in a dark place where we say, it seems as though the Lord is not hearing my prayer. Mm -hmm. I pray and I pray. But it just seems like God is not answering my prayer. There is something wrong. The body and the soul has taken full control. And the spirit man is dying. For some, amen, this can be difficult because many of us have been taught to spend far more time feeding the body and the soul rather than the spirit. We all like some good food. And we'll drive my house and have some good food. But we're feeding the body and not the spirit. Are you listening? So therefore, the body and the soul are often, amen, bigger than the spirit man. I wish somebody would say amen. amen. Bigger than your spirit man, that's why we find ourselves gaining weight, but not gaining weight in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it's bigger than the spirit man. And I have learned through the years that I've served God, don't let nothing be bigger than the spirit man. Are you listening? And so I read somewhere this. It says, where the body and the soul is hungry, they are loud. When the body and the soul is hungry, they are loud. L O U D, loud. But when the spirit is hungry, it's quiet. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why we get so much quietness on mine. Maybe this is why we get so much quietness when we should be hearing from you, we hear nothing. Mm -hmm. See, our bodies and our soul insist on being fed. That's right. Mm -hmm. And some of you get a headache. Some of you cop an attitude. Some of you go through changes when you can't eat. Some of us eat all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. But our body and our soul insist on being fed, and it will drive you to feed it. Our spirit man, on the other hand, isn't as the value. And that's why you. 
can let it be neglected. Mm -hmm. I know it's a different kind of, 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 of Sunday morning service, but we need all kinds of services. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God to make up the home for us so that we can be well rounded and whole in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. How many will agree with that? Yeah. So our bodies, amen, will demand that, that you feed. And our soul will demand that you feed it. But our spirit man will not make those kind of demands on you. But it is critical for you. It is critical for me that we keep, amen, our spirit well fed. Our spirit is what enables us to fully walk in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what helps us. That, that is our protection. We must, amen, be uh, uh, intentional about keeping our spirit fed. Because remember now, when it's lagging, it won't be loud. But when this body is not being fed, it'll get louder. Come on. So today I would like to just share ways you can you can feed your spirit in the name of God so that your body won't embarrass you. And this will, amen, equip you to live the life spirit driven. How many want to live a spirit-driven life? Yeah. This will equip you to live a spirit-driven life. Now, most of these points here, feeding points, I'm going to feeding points because everything has a time when it needs to be fed. But most of these feeding points are nothing new to you, but comes as a reminder to you so that, amen, if you find the red light blinking, you can go and you can plug up. A lot of times we can have everything that we, we need in life, you know, for body and soul, but yet there's a void and there is a, 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 a lacking, something we find ourselves not whole, mm -hmm. and it's because we haven't dealt with the spirit part of us, spirit, body, and soul. Yeah. Most of the time we deal with the body and the soul, but the spirit is hungry, but it's quiet. He it won't yell at you. Mm -hmm. He won't scream at you. Mm -hmm. He won't make you do anything. My God. But it'll leave a void inside of you mm -hmm. to say, here, I got everything that I need, but yet I'm not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's exciting yes. to say to you, something is missing. Mm -hmm. Most don't know what the something is. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you today, it is the lack of feeding the scripture. Yeah. So we're going to look at point number one. One of the things that God has been intentional about when it comes to this church is a prayer life. Yeah. A prayer life that most of us don't want to do because it's private and it's an intentional glory to God by each and every one of us. If you don't have a prayer life, you'll your spirit man will get hungry yeah. and it won't swing on. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Uh huh. So prayer is our communication with God. I know a lot of people tell me, well, you know, I don't know what to say to God. I don't know how to pray. You don't have to know a format when you deal with God. All you need to do is open your mouth. He's the one that hates you. Yeah. He understands you. He knows you. Just talk to him like you talk to other people. Just respect him in your conversation. Just honor him in your conversation. Make reverence to him in your conversation. Glory to God. And you are praying because that is the mode of communication that he desires to have with you. All right. So the power we receive in prayer, listen to this, feeds our spirit to spend time praying even the more. Yeah, it's going to be on TV if you need to get it. And it's also going to be out there on our site. Prayer is simply sharing your heart with God. Some people say to me, I just really want to pour out my heart to God. Well, pray. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 I, I, I just want to say some things to the Lord, and I don't know how. It's simple. God didn't create anything outside of the vocal cord, outside of conversation, but you didn't 
Yeah. He didn't create, you know, a format where you had to go somewhere and get something special to come back to do a meal. He said, open up your mouth. Yeah. I hope this is helping you. Yeah. I hope, you know, because there's been so many questions and, and so many, amen, wanderings that have been going on with God's people, amen, especially in the, in the atmosphere that we're living in today. It's a terrible atmosphere. It's like, I don't know the atmosphere that I'm known in. But God, you must know what you need to do to stay alive. Yeah. You must know, amen, Lord God, what you need to do to stay on top of this and not allow this to take you under. Yeah. So prayer is our communication. It's simply sharing our heart with God. The more you do it, the more you feed your spirit. Are you listening? So Ephesians 6 and 18 says, and prayer, it, it says, and prayer in the spirit, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. It lets you know that it's so, so, so important. I know this is a different translation. It's so important that you continue to pray. And even when you feel like stop, feel like you need to stop praying, pray on. Because you never get to a place where you need to stop praying. See, prayer is when you're riding along in your automobile and something is going to hold up and you just begin to talk it out loud. I said just to keep thinking, to honor, respect, and to reverence. The most high God. You know, you can't be kicking it with it. I'm a hey, daddy, 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 daddy. Respect that. Are you listening? So the 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 um the other thing that goes along with this is like a B to the to the first uh, uh, uh statement of prayer, but B is praying the spirit. Yeah. Important why you need the Holy Spirit. Important why every child, every born again believer needs to receive the Holy Spirit because you need to pray in the Spirit. See, the Bible tells us that we don't even all uh, we don't always know what we have need of, okay. and we surely don't know what other people have need of because other people just ask for prayer, but they tell you what they want you to know, mm-hmm. but they don't always tell you everything. Mm-hmm. So when you pray in the Spirit, in your heavenly language. You cover everything that needs to be covered because the spirit within you knows the truth. Are you listening? Are you listening? And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's simply a gift given to you by God that you can have it if you ask for it. If you ask for it. It's not reserved for special people. It's reserved only for those who have come. And you're getting of their sins and giving them up to God, and you can receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Nothing difficult, nothing hard about anything that God has given us or, or, or has, has put aside for us. It's all simple, it's attainable, it's reachable. It's right on the shelf where you can take it off. I know some people try to make things complicated. See, praying in your prayer language empowers our spirit to take the lead over our soul and our body. And the problem is you have allowed your soul and body to take the lead, and it's leading you all in the wrong direction. But you need your spirit man to lead you. And you need him to be empowered to lead you. I hope you listen. We don't always know the right things to pray for. But our spirit deep within ourselves exactly what we should pray for. Here's another one you have to keep in mind. Because now we're charging up because we see the red light blinking. We see the red light blinking and we got to do something. But see, if you stay on top of these things, the red light will never blink because you're always doing it. And so all you see is the green light as you continue to go from glory to glory. But now here the red light is blinking again and you're going to go into worship. Yeah. Listen, we are made to worship. Yeah. Worship is not difficult. Glory to God, hallelujah, because you are made, you are created to worship God. That's the reason why he created you to give him praise. You're not made for your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your whatever wife or, or whatever. You, you're first made for God. And then you are blessed with all these other things. Are you all listening? Yeah. God's going to deal with somebody's heart long after we love you. Somebody is going to make a confession to God. You hear what I'm saying? And go 
going to be changed and going to stop allowing the soul and the body to lead them, but allow the spirit of God yes, to take God. me. Yes, yes. Glory, hallelujah. Yes. Take the lead, amen. So worship, the need to worship. Worship is a powerful way to feed our spirit. Worship can be done anywhere you are, at home, at work, or at home. Worship can be done. Worship causes a shifting in your atmosphere. Yes. When you are being dragged, if you would just worship him, the atmosphere shifts. Why does it shift? Because he steps in. He steps in. And where the spirit of the Lord is, oh my God, my God, dread came well. So when people tell me I've been depressed a long time, I dare you to worship. Because he'll step in. Why? Because that is the one source that draws him. Amen. He'll step in and he'll shift your atmosphere. He'll change it from what the enemy wanted it to be to what he desired for it to be. In other words, he'll kill the body and the soul and he'll bring in the spirit to cause you to be alive. Yeah, bad things happen to us tonight. Every last one of us. But we can't stay there. We can't live there. We've got to live to see Jesus. And when we see our spirit man, we assure ourselves that we will meet him in the sky. Are you listening? Are you listening? And yes, we are sorrowful for some things, and we are sad about some things, but now we apply these things that I'm getting to you now, glory to God, it'll bring you out of that into a different kind of place. So that worship, song says this, worship the Lord with, uh, with gladness and come into, and, and, and say, come before him with joyful song. You can't come to the Lord or drug down and ask God to do something for you. Amen. If you come in with worship, you move the hand of God. Uh -huh. I'm trying to get through this real quick so I won't pull on you. Read the word. Some of you, that's the hardest thing. You think you need to be dedicated to reading God's word. Your body and your soul prevent you from it. Every time you go to me, what happens? I was going to rain, text come through, you need some, husband mm -hmm. needs some, yes, she was all that sleepy, get sleepy. It's yes, the body and soul kind of stuff. That's right. But you got to force yourself yes, to read the word of God. Yes. Nobody's asking you to read a whole chapter yes. or to read a whole book. We just simply ask you to read some of God's word. Yes. Yes. We need abortion every day. Yes. Glory to God. And after the world was started to happen, you start loving what you read. Yes, because there's nothing more transforming yes, than Jesus. the word of God. Yes. 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 It'll always show you something that you need to know. Are you listening? Yes. Everybody listen. Yes. So we have to read the word. The Bible is the living word of God. Reading it empowers and strengthens your spirit. Amen. Reading the Bible is powerful, people of God, and it's absolutely transform your life and keep your spirit fed well. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder why I don't get into these pity parties with you when you're saying certain things because I know something else. <laughs> I know that if you do what God told you to do, you don't have to stay there. Yeah. You don't have to remain there. I'm not jumping in the in the in the in the phone right. Amen. Glory to God. But I will tell you what you need to do. Amen. And if you really care about your spirit, you will do it and come up out of the rut that you've been in. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so, amen. We have to read the word. The word of God is spiritual food. Glory to God. The word of God is spiritual food. Amen. Glory to God for your spirit, people of God. Here's Peter writes this. He says, Amen. First Peter 2 and, and 2, he says, in the same way that, that nurses, this is different translation, nurses, infants cry for milk, 
You must intentionally crave and, and, uh, and the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For it is milk, but it's milk will cause you to grow into a maturity, fully nourished and strong for life. So we have to desire this word of God. You can't just wait until you see me on Sundays and, and then be a trans, be, be transformed by what you hear me say. But you got to go for yourself to that word so that you can feed your spirit, man. And then when you come here and you hear me speak the word, your man jump people in the wall. You're going to have your man meet what he's saying. You're going to have your whole cut back still. Yeah, because it, it meets within you. You know, when it meets you, always go. Right? Because you know, amen, that the Holy Spirit has heard something that it likes. Point number five, spend time with like minded believers. Now, this cut out all of you out to yourself kind of people. This cut out all you haters of other people. This cut out no righteousness against other people, unrighteousness. See, I say spend time with like minded believers. But some of you don't want to spend time with people because you got too many excuses and excuses about people when the same excuses are just ones you have. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're going to go right on into that. The word tells us, wait two or more of them. In my name, he said, I'll be in a mix. So spending time with other like minded Christians feeds your spirit. Why? Because there's always conversations that are going on that's going to lift your spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's what Proverbs 27, 17 said. Tell us that iron, it tells us that iron sharpens iron. So one person sharpens another person. But now if you don't like people, you'll never get sharpened. Because I've met Christians that don't like and I, I believe that they have been mistitled. They're not Christians. Because one thing, no matter how ugly an individual is, one thing that God will do is give you love for them. And he will give you the ability to deal with them in wisdom. That's God. You, you don't have to go in the house and shut the door and lock it. He'll teach you how to deal with them. And he'll give you more love for them than he'll give you for the ones that's already in love. Right. Y'all listening? Yeah. All right. So we got to amen, glory to God. Allow the iron to sharpen us. This means that we can build each other up and we can help increase each other faith by spending time talking about the Lord, talking about God and sharing how he is working in our lives uh, it should be an ongoing conversation for us. And that's why when we get to a place where testimony time, and nobody says yeah. Moving on. Give thanks. This can go right along with worship. But give thanks. Psalm 106 and 1 says, Praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord. For he is good and his love and good so It's not strange for you all to give thanks and give praise and give, give um, worship to the Lord. It's not a strange thing. What is strange is that you don't. Because he created you to worship him. He created you to praise him. He created you to recognize his goodness and his mercy. And when we don't, that's strange. So give thanks. We are made to worship God and continuously be thankful for, for the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Being thankful feeds your spirit because when you are thankful, you are living as you were always meant to live. I should hope you are. Give thanks in all circumstances. But this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
Now she might give thanks in bad time. Yes, because it could have been worse. Yeah. It could have been worse. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and most times we don't even understand that the little that you have to deal with could have been much greater. That's right. The little that comes to you, you have to understand that God's hand has been a sickler. Yeah. And it has really prevented the big stuff from hitting you in your head. Amen. It could have been worse. You know what I'm saying? It could have been worse. But because God's hand is over your life, he pre prevents you from Xavier certain things from hitting you. Now you may feel an impact, but you didn't feel the full impact. Because of God's hand. That's why we like to give thanks and all things. Next month, you need to fast. You don't need to wait for the church to call the call of fast. You need to fast. Have your own fast. Most of you eat no Thursdays and you chopping it up at Taco Bell. And cook out. So that I say chopping it up so many of those days. But you need to learn to fast. You know when your body is calling for a fast because food is a little satisfying. That means you need to go to fast and stop eating. But what do we do? We won't fast because we want to please the body and the soul. But the spirit is silent, it's quiet, it's not going to scream out to you, fast! But it will give you signs. That you need to like health problems and issues and swelling and, 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 and toxics and, 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 and all kinds of stuff will start to happen, you know, in your body that indicate to you that you need to stop eating and just drink some water and clean yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> so that your thinking can be clear. So that your relationship with God, there be no hindrances, that you can hear from heaven. Right. So we need to fast. The body and the soul gets loud when it's right. on. Mm, that's why some of y'all shift in your teeth because you want to eat now. You want that fried chicken and macaroni and cheese and greens because your body is talking loud. Are you with me? But the spirit, remember, it's quiet. So not feeding your body or your soul for a period of time or, or a period of time allows your spirit to take the lead. I don't want the spirit to take the lead. I want the spirit to take the lead. So now you understand and you have a good understanding of how to get to the place where the spirit takes the lead. All right. So we want our spirit to take the lead. There are many different paths that you can do, and I won't go into them in that. You can look them up somewhere and find them, but you can, there's all kinds of facets you can do. Now, Matthew 4 and 4 says, he reminds us that man cannot live by bread alone. You can't eat your way through this life. Um, you hear what I'm saying? If you eat your way through this life, you're going to deal with sickness, sicknesses, and all kinds of uh, infractions in your body that should not be that God never intended because he expects your body to give, you know, to be a, 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 a a beautiful example of what he has created. But what we do, we stuff it full of stuff that breaks it down, that tears it down, that brings all kinds of diseases and sickness to us because we are so busy trying to satisfy. Okay, so fasting is a great way to position yourself to hear clearly from the Lord and to uh, feed your spirit. That's a good way. Point eight. I only got 10 points. So. Point eight. Attend church service. Look at y'all so sporadic. Y'all go here with y'all. Nice stuff. Y'all go everywhere faithfully. You don't miss a day at work. You're going to be at work. If they say it's a work day, you're going to be there in the snow and the rain. Sunstones. COVID. You're going to be there. 
But how would you dedicate yourself to be at church? Why? You know, because people always say, they just want me to be at church because of my money. Well, how much money do you have for Christ's sake? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a whole lot of money to make that kind of sake. But if you want the ones getting three and four and five dollars, why is the one here just to get your money? Somebody answer that later. That's not the case. Here's the reason why they want you there. When you step into the spirit filled church, <laughs> you can feel your spirit come alive. Carmen came through the door this morning. She said, Whoo! <laughs> One, her spirit came in contact with the spirit of God and it caused her to make a sound. Some of you, when you walked in the door, you felt in me. You said, Whoo! It's not as if I see the enemy had you sitting at home saying, Don't go to that church because they're going to be looking at your body. You know, blah, blah. You know, all the lies that he's been telling you all that I'm doing the years. They talking about you. They got this and they got that. Go out. If people, I'm going to say, if you're that important to people, most people don't even think about you to this people. Oh, good to see you. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs>
is remove impurities from your life. You do that. You can do that. You know what they are. Remove. Second Corinthians says, amen, seven and one. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friend, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates our body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of the reverence of God. So we cannot fill our spirit with what the world says is acceptable. And this is big one right here, y'all. Because now that they have legalized marijuana in some places, you want to run and get you some. <laughs> some people move to that state. Come on now. See, this is the world says it's okay. Doesn't necessarily mean it's okay with God. I, I even mean that's why every fashion and every whatever, whatever that comes on the scene from the world, that the church cannot be bothered with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Tell me when they doing it side, some people are like, oh, all oh, oh, the people do it, apostles. You old fashioned. It's not that I'm old fashioned, because I'm, you know, you know, I'm pretty out of real. I am. <laughs> it's not that I'm old fashioned, it's simply that I stay in the word. I had somebody tell me, why, why you gotta bring up the word and everything? Well, that's because that's what I live. That's who I am. So it's gonna come out. And I wish that it would come out of you for. Look at this. Remove the impurity. God, he says, um, we cannot fill our spirit with what the world calls acceptable. Go with your, your, your gut check. You know how you get a gut check? Go with the gut check because it's used the spirit that you know there's something wrong. That's right. Huh? That's what he uses. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, 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 he may be calling you to remove something that doesn't appear bad. But just not for you and the path in which God is leading you that. Because that's when they tell me, everybody's doing what they got to do. Right. You got to know what's for you and what's not for you. Just because everybody's doing don't mean you can do it. So, concluding, I hope that these tips have helped you, first of all. Right. And I've encouraged you to spend more time finding, I mean, uh, feeding your spirit. Amen. A well fed spirit is essential to stepping into. A, uh, your calling and your living uh, this life that God has called you to live. And so spend time in the Word of God and watch your spirit come alive. Spend time in the Word of God and watch your spirit. Spend time with these points that I've given you and watch your spirit come alive. God is for you and He desires the best for you, but you, like Tesla, Got to stay good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody.